Okay, so this is video three in the format series. Um, and what we're doing again, we're looking at format to help us visualize some early design thinking with the site. So this lesson is gonna take us through um, a little bit of visualization, both being able to see things a little bit more clearly in Revit beyond just topography lines, you know, getting a little bit more than just the technical information because identifying, you know, like that as my site when what I'm seeing in Revit is this is very tricky to do. So we need to bring in this image, um, satellite image into Revit and use it as an underlay, so to speak. And then we need to push um, the file to twin motion to get really uh, deep into doing some nice visualization on the site. We're not going to get to the nice part yet, just the how to's to get started. So first, let's look at Revit. So right now I'm look I've got my site view. I've got my topography lines as generated by this format file, but I need to grab this image and export it so that I can use it inside of Revit. So um, to do that, typically, you know, I have my layers view activated here. I want to switch to um, my materials tab. And you'll notice right now on the site, I only have, or on this project, I only have two materials, my default material and the terrain. So if I double click right here on this terrain icon, you'll see that is the image map that's being projected onto my surface to create the image over the terrain. I'm going to click, oh man, that's old school, a little floppy disk um, save button right here from format. And uh, because I'm lazy when I do these, I'm just gonna write it to my desktop. So you'll notice this is terrain-texture.png. Save and okie dokie. So inside of Revit, what I want to do is just go to my insert, and this time I'm not importing CAD, um, and I don't really want to use the link, I just want to go ahead and bring this into my file. I'm going to go to import image. Um, I'll risk it, having not saved in a while. Um, PNG is one of my options, or a ping file. That's my file right there, terrain texture.png. And I'm just going to place this someplace up above. Um, Problem with Revit is we're default set to hidden line. It's not really a problem. It's just a statement of how it works. Um, so to be able to see these two things working together, I simply want to change this to wireframe. So this gives me both my satellite and my topography lines working together. So what I'm going to do to start that, um, I'm going to go move. And if you notice, um, snapping is really tricky. It doesn't really like to work very much because the topography is a three-dimensional entity it's sort of out in space. So this is one of those you get it close kind of moments and then you're okay with it, which I usually don't like to say about architecture. But you know, when working with topography, close is kind of good, right? Um, topography isn't you know measuring every rock that's on site anyway. So close is acceptable in this case. And again, we're still just really looking at this as something to get us started, right? So now I have um, the basics of the aerial photograph or the satellite photograph working with my topo lines. I know exactly where my site is. I had a pretty good guess, as it were, this little blue dude is um, the center point, or at least it starts at the center point of the Cartesian coordinate axis system in Revit. That's sort of my zero, 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 although I can move it, so maybe I shouldn't call it that. But I knew approximately where it was, and now I have the satellite photograph to work with um, and be a little bit more precise. Now, if I switch this to a 3D view, again, that is gone because images are only locational based. Um, I could map that image onto the terrain but you know, I really rarely have I needed that inside of Revit. So I'm not going to go over that. That's just sort of an extra step. Um, to me, it adds in sort of a little bit too much confusion. I'd rather see it when I go to 3D. I just want to see the object that I'm modeling. I don't want to have that image there. This is going to do enough for me to get started. So moving this into twin motion. Um, when I move something into twin motion, um, typically, um, I need to be in a three-dimensional view. I shouldn't say typically. Let's, let's change that pretty much to always. I want to be in this three-dimensional view. Um, and I've got two options 
to go with. Uh, three, I suppose. Um, if I go to um, Datasmith, that is a plugin that you probably want to add in to Revit. And let's just go ahead and open that up. Um, that plugin can be found at Twinmotion Plugins Revit right there as, as a resource. Um, and essentially what this does is it is going to install this Datasmith tab inside of Revit. Um, you need to make sure Revit is closed down when you do the installation. First time you start up Revit after installing that little plugin, it's going to say, do you always want to import it um, as a plugin in each file? Typically, I would say yes to that. From here, you really have two options. I can synchronize or export to Datasmith. Synchronize is basically setting up Revit and Twinmotion working in parallel, same time. And if you have a powerful enough computer, meets all the specs of both Revit and Twinmotion, and can accommodate those specs while they're both running at the same time, it's a great option. Typically what I teach is either export to Datasmith, or I teach file, export, and then I utilize the FBX format. Um, because Datasmith is excellent and it's come a long way, we are going to start teaching this quite a bit more. Um, it does a little bit better job of organizing, maintaining some material data, some things like that, whereas the FBX is going to strip most of that information away and just give you sort of a layered, organized model. So let's look at exporting Datasmith and what it's going to see. Um, oh, got to save my Revit file first. So let's go File, Save As, Project. Again, we'll just write this desktop site, ARC, 222.23. Save. And then we're going to export the Datasmith file. Um, I can get rid of all the extra stuff here. And save. So uh, obviously for something this small, um, there's not a lot happening with the data to be optimized for the Unreal Engine. But when I get into larger projects, more geometry, more materials, that Datasmith step is going to become more and more important. So inside of Twin, I can click the Import File, Open, and then we are going to go to the desktop where that file is saved. And that is my file right there. Site R22223. Datasmith. Open and import. And that's going to bring in this very massive piece of topography. In fact, let's go right to the eyeball speed tab and let's change this to drive speed so that I can see how big that great big plane is. Now, again, this is kind of nice. This works pretty well. Um, Obviously, I would, you know, next step is, you know, we're in the Himalayas. I don't need the city and the buildings behind that, so we would get into doing all of those things. But before I do that, and that is for another video, before I do that, what I really want to do is it'd be really nice to have the satellite image on this. And one of the ways that I can go about that is actually leveraging this original format file. So from this format file, if I do file, export, locally, I can also save out an FBX version. So I'm going to do, again, um, visible only, my FBX file, and this is visible only even though I've turned off all my layers and have things set, I, I want to make sure it's only taking this topography object, okay? So I'm exporting an FBX, I'm going to hit the uh, export button here, and then we'll save its location to the desktop, so site 1, arc 222, topo, FBX. So now when I go to Twin Motion, I can do import, open, and let's look for that FBX file, and import. And what is nice about this is that, well, that's given it in multiple parts here, so let's zoom out. Let's look at my overall objects. So there's my site, one, architecture 222 topography. I now have that object put together with the satellite photograph on it. 
Now, if you notice, um, it has not maintained true north, which is reasonably bad. Um, the reality is true north. I, again, that data has not come across to twin motion anyway. I no longer have my latitude and longitude. I'm, I'm going to need to set that up inside of twin motion. But just to make sure everything's kind of on the up and up, let's go ahead and rotate that around and put those two things side by side just so we can start to see um, how those two things look um, and make sure that they're looking generally correct with each other. You notice one has the other five sides beyond this. Um, and again, I can turn those off and on if I need to, um, which is right here. Uh, but both of these will start working um, to place trees, grass, terrains, buildings, all of that stuff as my stage as I move forward in Twin Motion. We'll get a little bit more into the navigation of Twin Motion and some of the tools in Twin Motion. Right now, we're just looking at how these start to export and how they start to show up. Next lesson will be diving a little bit further into formant simulation, and then we will come back around to populating this um, object inside of Twin Motion, making it a little bit more immersive, making it feel a little bit more real.